As Nigerians continue to hail the establishment of the Federal University of Medical and Health Sciences, Kwale, in Indokwa, West Local Government Area of Delta State, the Delta State Election Petition Tribunal began pre-hearing in the governorship petitions and other cases filed by candidates and political parties challenging the declaration of Sheriff Oborewori of the People's Democratic Party as the duly elected governor of the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. Some of the parties challenging the outcome of the election conducted on March 18 include the All Progressives Congress and its candidate Ovie Omwagege, as well as Action Alliance and its candidate Esther Esevoe. Others are Kenneth Bagi of the Social Democratic Party, along with candidates of APC, the Labour Party and the All Progressives Grand Alliance. Omar Gege in his petition alleged fraudulent counting, collation, recording of false results and declaration of results across the 25 councils of the state and prayed that he be declared winner of the election. Joining us now on the morning show on the Delta State Politics and Tribunal pre-hearing is Professor Rukewe Ugumba, a Canadian-based professor of medicine and family health and a chieftain of All Progressives Congress, Delta State. Also joining us from Asaba is Dr. Festus Okubo, Chief Strategist to the Delta State Government and a Chieftain of People's Democratic Party in Delta State. Good morning and welcome to the morning show. Good morning. Hello. Good morning, Prof. Uh, good morning, Doctor. Well, I mean, the pre-hearing uh, process has started at the Delta State uh, Election Petition Tribunal. But, I mean, we are not here to do the job of the tribunal for it, now that the matter is uh, before it. But it looks like the uh, governorship election in Delta State is so highly contested. So many parties are going uh, to the tribunal. Uh, if you may just, one after the other, let's start with you, Professor Rukewa. Tell us about your hopes and expectations. And then Dr. Uh, Okumbo, uh, we also would like to hear from you. Professor Rukewa, you go first. Your candidate is asking for a recounting of the, of the votes. Yes, Ruben, thank you very much. Nice to be here again. Um, I'll just have to say a quick shout out to my son. It's his birthday today, he's 16. So happy sweet 16, Abella. Yes, um, it's serious business. Um, we all know that um, two weeks um, prior to, actually three weeks prior to the um, elections for my principal, we had a very big defeat of the PDP um, in Delta State where the sitting governor was a VP candidate. And so um, we, we, we understood that he lost um, massively. And so, again, the expectation going into elections was that this was a done deal. We didn't, <laughs> little did we know that they had a lot of tricks up their sleeve. And so um, what we didn't get at the polls, we will get in court. And so um, we have a very robust case. They call it the locals, classicals of, of cases. We have ironclad case uh, where luckily for us, uh, there's a precedence in the Supreme Court uh, where the Beavers is actually um, the means for accreditation for um, voting on the election day. And so we know that they had so many infractions and um, in fact, they will not be sitting comfortably in their seat for very long because um, we will win in court. So I'm very, very hopeful. Um, we know that the tribunal started yesterday. We had um, a bit of, um, you know, postponement um, because of some petitions that were filed late. But we expect an expedited process because it's very clear cut that uh, the PDP did not win this election. And we actually won and they, they robbed us and we will <laughs> regain our mandate um, in court. So yes, I'm very hopeful, Ruben that we will get our mandatory court again, um, looking at the new electoral act, which um, I don't think the PDP realized that this was not business as usual. And um, I think they used the one week extension to perfect their, their plans for rigging. And um, it won't last anyway. So like I said, I don't think I'm overly confident. Uh, we have, we have um, a slew of excellent, <laughs> I'm talking lawyers, senior advocates over 10, um, I mean, the best of the best are on our team. And um, I know that um, we've looked at it and we're very confident that this will not even take a very long time for, for, um, for my principal, His Excellency Senator Ovi Omoagege, to be 
at the helm of affairs of Delta State as we expect. Well, Dr. Festus Okubo, your hopes and expectations as chief strategist. Thank you. What, what, what I expect really is that um, the, I expect that their case, the case filed by the APC, will be thrown out of court. The case makes no sense. It is nearly a waste of everybody's time. But this is um, a democratic practice and they have the right to desire to go to court and ventilate uh, their, their minds, which they are doing, you know. And, but as far as the facts of the elections go, they don't have any case whatsoever. Look, at elections, everybody is in his polling unit. So you sit in your polling unit and you're telling me that my polling unit experienced violence or there was overvoting or whatever excuses you want to give. You were not there. And I, who was at the polling unit, and I'm telling you that there's no such thing. You must believe me. And um, I don't want to go into this issue deeply because it is subjudice right now. It's in court. But going through the papers, the APC has no case, and the lawyers will show it in the courts. Our lawyers are ready. Our candidate, you know how they say it, a clear conscience fears no accusation. So we are not, we are not worried <coughs> in the least. We are not worried in the least. We are preparing for life after the tribunal in victory. The, look, from the presidential elections, if you looked at the votes and the patterns of how and where the PDP got her votes and the votes of the APC and where and how they got their votes, you will agree that the gubernatorial elections results was a true reflection of the tendencies in the state. So we'll keep um, being with them in the courts until the matter is But it would have been better for the political evolution of our state, as we called upon them immediately after the elections, for them to have extended an, 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 a hand of fellowship to, to uh, the PDP a gubernatorial candidate. It would have been nice, but since they haven't taken that opportunity and have chosen the path of litigation, we will meet in court. We've gone through their papers. I do not see anything in them. I uh, don't take any good. We don't take any case lightly, so we will meet them in court. But my expectation, and my indeed my earnest expectation, is that the matter as filed by the APC and her gubernatorial candidate will be thrown out for want of merit here. Yeah. All right. Thank you, uh, Dr. Okuba and Professor uh, Ogumba. As you've mentioned, the case is in court, and at the end of the day, respective of what you have said, the court will decide in whose favor that they would rule um, at the end of the um, at the end of the um, sitting. But I'd like to ask you, in terms of what Dr. Okubo said, Professor Ogumba, is your principal, Senator Ovi Omoagege, willing to collaborate with? The, uh, you know, the governorship of Sheriff Oborori in the event that he's sworn in on the 29th of May. Because at the end of the day, what we assume is that he wants the best for the people of Delta State. So would there be an, any kind of collaboration, any kind of working together, irrespective? And this question is both ways because the outcome after the court's proceedings could be either way. So we're not going to you know, judge in, in terms of that, but would you be willing to work together? And in terms of your party supporters, ensuring that they are, you know, they remain civil during this process, how do you manage communication in that instance? I'll go first to Professor Rukore and then I'll come to Dr. Okubo. Um, thank you, thanks a lot. Um, it's, um, it, I was laughing, I know, I know Festus very well, he's my colleague as well, my senior brother, 
and um, we used to work together in government. So I was just laughing when he was speaking. He knows how they used to do things. And what they, they didn't uh, anticipate is that there's a new electoral law which will prove in court that they actually rigged the elections and they actually lost at the polls. We won that election. Now, um, regarding collaboration, I mean, how do you collaborate with somebody that you beat? I mean, they, you know, it's, um, it's very clear that they didn't use the, the bypass the beavers and even the way they conducted their own um, elections. He was saying that, how can you be in my unit and tell, in a different unit and tell how he went to a unit? We have agents in every unit. So we know exactly what happened in those units. So it's, it's, you don't have to be trans transporting yourself physically for you to get reports of what's going on. That's why you have um, party agents all over the um, 25 local governments. And so, like you said, um, the fact that they're rigged doesn't mean that they're going to, he's going to stand in court. I know they're very uncomfortable. They're very, very jittery. When my principal said we want to vote um, recounted, we want to see um, the Beavers machine and we want to see how they voted and including recounting of the votes, because if we are challenging that you rigged and you lied about the outcome, he must be able to reproduce the results. And INEC has the duty to, to do that and, and show that. So I'm not even in doubt in, in any way, to be honest, um, that there will be a situation where we'll have to now have to work with um, this current government because they're not going to be there for very long, to be honest. My principal is a very peaceful um, man. He has not, um, he has not call, um, said anyone should go to violence or anything. He just said, you know what, let the um, due process um, happen. You understand, we took our time. We have, like I said, an ironclad petition that will show that we actually won that election. So again, <laughs> you know, um, I don't know how else to elaborate right. on the fact that okay. in a very short time, and I know it's 180 days maximum, we will get sworn in as the sitting governor of Delta State for the next four years, and then they can come and challenge us again after that. Hi, right, Dr. Kubo. Uh, now, the question for you would be, you said that you don't know why uh, the APC hasn't chosen to work with the PDP in this instance rather than go to court. What efforts have been made in terms of reaching out a hand to them? And again, the question goes to you. Would you be willing to work with them in the event that the APC emerges as uh, a substantive governor? Well, the best thing that would have happened is that the APC, being the major opposition um, group in the state amongst the other political parties, you know, that they extended the hand of fellowship immediately after the elections. I do know that several calls were made. People have talked to them. Our gubernatorial candidate, has, our governor-elect now, has uh, made um, efforts to reach them at various levels. Efforts have been made to say, gentlemen, why can't we change the storyline in Delta? Must we uh, go to court every time? And uh, lots of resources been been uh, expended in hiring uh, lawyers to handle your litigations. Why can't we just move on and let everybody know that we are uh, one people? In our party primaries, immediately after the, the primaries, all the candidates you saw how we, they all came together and, uh, you know, and operated as one. Yeah, well, so that's the sort of thing that would have been expected. But in spite of all the uh, uh, outreach to, to them, they are in court. We, you will, when you listen to Rookie, she told you we once were in the same government. We, all, we know all of them are children from PDP. They are PDP's our mother. You know, we know ourselves. We do not need to to quarrel too far for political reasons. You know, and then uh, our people also tell you that uh, a face you know is not one for you to scratch and, and wound because you will always see that face. At this point, they're in court. All the issues they have raised in court to me they make no legal, no political or
or social sense, that matter as filed will be thrown out of the court. I have no doubts about that. But the matter is sub -judice, so let me not begin to go into the nitty gritties of what they have filed and what we have filed. The lawyers will do their job in the court. And, and thank God we have a very competent uh, team of, of lawyers also. But as a layman, you can't build something on nothing. They have no case. Okay. Uh, this case is in court. But, uh, uh, Professor Rukawe, uh, something you said caught me. And you said both of you both served in government at the same time. So you used to be of the PDP stock. Question is, what went wrong along you politicians? And please, can you regale us with how they used to rig the rig, you claim the rig, back in the days? We would like to know a little bit about that. You Thank know. you. Yes. Before and I'm, you always I, ask the tough questions. Yeah, and I'm sure okay. he'll give a rebuttal to that. <laughs> can you tell us how they used to rig the rig back in the days? Okay, first of all, first of all, Chief of Staff, when I was a special advisor to Dwar in 2011 to 2015. And like you said, he's a physician, I'm a physician. And so he's like my senior brother. And he's actually a really nice guy in, in, in all sense, with all sense of responsibility. Now we're on, you know, other side of the aisle and um, it's politics. And um, I, I wasn't... Um, very happy at all with Okoa, Okoa's government. As you know, I was a special advisor to Duan, so they pretty much chased all of us out of the government. I mean, it's interesting that Duan is back with Okoa, but we know how the antagonism was. There was no room for a rookie in that government. And so that's why I was pretty much chased out. And that's why I left the PDP. And um, so I, I went to APC in 20, 2015, and I've been in the APC since then. Oh. There's one or two other issues. Going back to how they rig the rig, okay? They, do, they don't do elections, you know? They pretty much don't print, you know, ballot boxes. For example, in Brutu, they can tell you there are 30,000 votes, river votes. We know that um, no voting occurred. Um, they signed ballot boxes, things like that. And um, that's how they used to do it in, in, in the old style. And they thought this would still be the same style. I'm thinking, you know, if you compromise one or two persons, you know, uh, be it the INEC, I'm sure you've had all kinds of infractions with INEC, and, um, or is it the, um, the, the security agencies? I don't want to talk, uh, like I said, about the facts of our case, but the truth is they know what they did. They did not win that election. And how they used to do it before was exactly how they tried to do it again. The only difference now is there's a very robust law that gives accreditation with a bimodal method, and they have bypassed that significantly. And it will, it will show that it's not possible to get the kinds of results they claim to get in, in the record times they claim to get it, where there was proper voting would have occurred. And so, you know, I, I would just leave it there because like, like we have over 10 sons on our case. I mean, I mean, I can mention their names. You, you know, you hear from them in due course. Okay. And um, yes, and okay. that's, that's the, the crux of the matter. They did not conduct elections in many polling units. They just wrote okay. results okay. and but, told but, but, but I want to ask you this. But when you knew and when you were with them about when they were rigging, you didn't speak out then, right? <laughs> I wasn't rigging with them, oh, fine. I was not rigging with them. <laughs> I come from UK, Ugweru, you know, in the, in the local government. And we used to conduct elections in my place. We because these are trade secrets you're revealing. In my place. <laughs> because these are trade secrets you're revealing. So I'm like, you knew I didn't speak out when you were having the no, trade the, secrets. The, <laughs> no, no, the, the, the thing is, the thing is, the good news is, like um, Festo said, we all come from the same party. My principal, His Excellency, <laughs> Senator Vilma Gigi, knew what they did. No, That's why it, he was very interested it, it's, it's, in this it's, electoral it's act and the reforms. Because it, we knew that what they are capable of doing. And so we kind of, from insider, used to checkmate them. That's what okay. exactly is Well, you did speak out Yes, I, I didn't rig with them in their place. In, I'm not from Ruburu too. I'm yeah, but, but you votes. didn't speak out there because, you know, it was, voted, yes. it was, it was uh, you know, you were part of the family. <laughs> uh, uh, can you respond to that, sir? Yes, well, first of all, 
I'm, I'm, I'm glad that um, you tricked her, you tricked her brilliantly into making some admissions of uh, her knowledge and ex expertise. Hello? Yes, yes. Yeah, well, I'm glad that. you tricked her into admitting her knowledge and expertise on, of uh, rigging issues. Look, in the PDP, we do not rig elections. We work hard. Your teams are here. We go from unit to unit. We go from unit to, to every ward. From every ward, we go to every local government. We campaign everywhere. We deal with the issues. We bring out their lies. We let the people see them for who they are. You just heard her. She was in PDP. Oh, they were chased out of government. In the assumption that being in government is a right, in a state of over 4 million people, you can be in government every time. If you are, glory be to God. But once in a while, opportunities are given to other people. That's what inclusiveness is all about. And then because someone else is included and you are not included, you are upset you are leaving the party. The same problem with Nigeria. Husbands and wives' homes are breaking up at the slightest inconvenience. People are jumping ship. That's not the way to live. It is not the right way. However, as a party, we believe in hard work. And we kept saying it throughout the campaigns that the APC as a party were not prepared for election. Every time they open their mouth, they will lie. Every time, they will lie. But the people are the judge. And I keep saying also that if you look at the outcome of the presidential elections and see the vote distribution between PDP and APC, you will see a near replication of it at the gubernatorial elections. So the gubernatorial elections outcome was a true reflection of what is or what was on ground in Delta, electorally speaking. Now, if you also looked at the gubernatorial elections, if you follow the media, the only places where you had violence in Delta were in Urugu, in Ugeli, and in Ethiop West. Urugu, Ugeli North, Ugeli South, that's where Ruki comes from. That's where where their gubernatorial oh. candidate comes from. So, yes, they may indeed be expertly at a rigging, but how do you rig when the people do not desire to make you their, the, the, the victor in that election? And that's the only explanation, that the PDP beat them very clearly at the, at the, at the, at the federal elections, and beat them very clearly at the uh, state elections. At the federal elections, out of the 12 seats, out of the federal, 12 federal seats that were up, PDP took seven. And the rest were shared by all the other parties. Is that not a reflection of what happened at the gubernatorials? I don't, I can't understand why they just won't let these issues go and you know, stretch out hands and be sportsmen. But, well, here we are. We will continue to meet with them in the court and um, continue to ventilate the issues. What is very clear is that PDP, for reasons more than one, got the support of the people, have the confidence of the electorates in Delta, and they won the election. Well, Professor Ogumba and uh, Dr. Okubo, on the question mm -hmm of the election petitions in uh, Delta State. I think we should allow the judges and the lawyers to end their pay. So I would like to ask you a general question, which has been a major fallout of this entire process. The argument by some persons that going forward in future elections, and even now, that election petitions should be determined before any inauguration. Because by May 29, persons will be sworn in, and then you know, for the most part, some people argue will have been presented with a fair accompli. And, you know, why the matter continues in the court. What do you both think? Do you support the view that perhaps for future purposes, Nigeria should get to a point whereby election petitions are determined 
before any inauguration. I'll start with you, Dr. Okubo, and then we'll go back to Professor Ogumba. Uh, thank, you very, thank you very much. I will, I will speak as an individual. Uh, has it finished? Yes. Go ahead, please. I will, thank you. I will speak as an individual. My opinion, the opinion I'm going to express now is mine because as a party, there's no position that the party has expressed. But my personal opinion is that uh, post-election litigations uh, must be concluded before assumption of office of all elected officials across the country. Um, you know, because we are in dispute and then you have been sworn in, it's, yes, the lawyers will argue that it doesn't matter whether the person is sworn in or not, that the rest, that is the subject matter is uh, indestructible, which is the office, so once the courts make a judgment, if it is in your favor, you will continue. If it's not in your favor, you will vacate. But the truth is that a court case hanging on the neck of an elected official can be a huge pressure. And so when he is in the office, for instance, as president, and you're not sure as to whether you will win the case or not, you cannot give full concentration to the work. You, you really cannot. You will spend so much time, you know, scheming and brainstorming on how to ensure victory. And that takes precedence over, over governance. And for that alone, uh, it will be healthier for Nigeria and the electoral process uh, for the uh, post-election litigations to be brought to an end before officials uh, go into office. Beyond that, you've heard in the course of these campaigns, a, a candidate will tell you, snatch it, take it, grab it, run with it. And they do this, and eventually, litigations come up, they will be sworn in. It is as if the, those who set out to destroy our democracy are, are winning. Because otherwise, why would you grab it, take it, run with it, and be declared, and then you are sworn in? Or every other, the society is disadvantaged. And we need to discourage electoral malfeasance. Let elections take place, let litigations take place, and let them be concluded before the rightful uh, victor uh, assumes office. Thank you. Well, quickly, Professor Gumba, do you concur or you disagree? Well, it's, it's very interesting that we are actually on the same page on this one. Again, I'm not speaking for the um, position of my party. I am um, I'm speaking as an individual and somebody who's been around in politics for a long time, um, especially when you know you didn't win the elections. Eh? How will you breathe comfortably? How can Sheriff relax when he knows he is going to be out in, because they actually didn't win? So yes, it can be very distracting. And um, it's a waste of money. For example, as we speak, um, the current governor has um, 15 new projects. 15 new projects. We have less than 30 days to, um, <laughs> you know, hand over. And he's, he, you know, is embarking on new projects. That's because, you know, they want to continue what they, they you know, borrowing and putting us into <laughs> great debt. And that's the continuity we do not want. Okay, so, so again, you know, they don't know how long they're going to be there, so they want to rush and do things um, before the courts will, will take them out. 
I agree completely that it's a waste of um, resources. The whole procedure, the whole um, forming government, whether it's transition or, you know, uh, making commissioners or, or advisors or whatnot, um, just for them to sit down for a few minutes and then, and then you know, get upseated um, by the court. So, yes, for sure, I would, I would really would like the law strengthened whereby not just the um, 180 days from, from when they um, uh, start the process. So, for example, we filed in March. So this process must end within 180 days from when we filed our petition to the highest court. And so I like that, but it's, it can be even better, whereas the elections can be held sooner than, than you know, the three months before the, um, the transition to the new government maybe six months, so that you still give them that time to, um, to, to do the litigation, because we know that whoever lost will go on appeal to the highest court, and everyone has the right um, to, to their day in court. And so, so I, I, you know, I, like you said, I agree with my senior brother and my colleague, senior colleague, um, in this matter, that yes, we should bury the whole election till the next cycle. So at the time of the swearing in, we know that whoever is there is there for the next four years. Well, and that will that serve note. the people of the state better. Like I said, they are, they are using our money like we don't know. And, you know, and we will have to come and start to dig ourselves out of the hole. Whereas well, we could have ended it with that the note, last um, administration. On that note, I'd like to thank you very much, uh, Dr. Rukewe and also Dr. Kubo uh, for joining us on The Morning Show.